In less than six hours, Ernest Lee Johnson will be put to death by lethal injection. Despite pleas for clemency from activists in Missouri to lawmakers in Washington, D.C., even Pope Francis, Missouri Governor Mike Parson refused to show mercy to Johnson, who will likely suffer an excruciating death in just a matter of hours. Now, according to his lawyer, Mr. Johnson has a benign brain tumor, and back in 2008, operation was performed to remove it. It left him with about 20% of his brain tissue, and the drugs that will be used in tonight's ex execution could cause violent seizures. Joining me now is Mr. Johnson's attorney, Attorney Dermot Weiss. Um, attorney Weiss, welcome to BNC Live. Thank you, sir. Um, are there any Thank last you. minute pleas uh, being taken, considering we're now four hours and 20 minutes away from your client being executed? Sure. Um, we filed uh, yesterday a petition for writ of certiorari in the United States Supreme Court uh, from the decision by the Missouri Supreme Court on August 31 denying him relief. Uh, we filed a reply brief this morning uh, at about 9 o'clock uh, our time, about 10 o'clock Eastern, and we anticipate the court will reach a decision sometime during the course of today. Um, the governor, Mike Parson, he released a statement last night which said, uh, in part, the state is prepared to deliver justice. What was your reaction to that? Disappointment. Uh, we believe we had a very strong case to present to the governor and did present it. We had our experts uh, come in, Dr. Dan Martell, to answer any questions they had about Mr. Johnson's intellectual disabilities that have been well documented over the course of the 61 years. Um, we think that justice is, in this case, for Mr. Johnson to spend the rest of his life in prison. As the, the U.S. Supreme Court has said that it violates the Eighth Amendment uh, against cruel and unusual punishment to put to death those who are intellectually disabled. And it's not a close case. Mr. Johnson is intellectually disabled. And uh, it's just wrong to execute him. Attorney Weiss, does your client understand what is about to happen to him today? He does. He is competent. Um, but I can't say that he fully understands everything that's going on in terms of the work that we're doing uh, as, as attorneys or advocacy that's being undertaken on his behalf. He appreciates it, but uh, I think he, he's aware that, that he might not come home. Uh, and for home for him is going back to Potosi Correctional Center. Now, coming home and dying are two different things, sir. Does he understand that he is going to be put to death in a matter of hours? Uh, he does understand that if we're not successful in the U.S. Supreme Court, that he will be put to death. What is his response? You know, Ernest has a, has a very caring personality. I met with him this morning along with a colleague of mine for about an hour and a half. And he is far more concerned with how we feel and how we are doing. Uh, he tried to make us laugh, which he did. Um, but he's, uh, he's scared. You can see it in his eyes. He clearly didn't sleep. Um, and, you know, I feel for him, I, you know, he's, he has, I've represented him for 10 years. He has become a friend. Uh, he is the only client I've ever had that every time he talks with you, he tells that he loves you. Um, this was very personal to me and in, in a lot of ways, cause I have a, a younger brother who is intellectually disabled and I see a lot of similarities in how I interact with both of them, even though they're very different in certain ways. And it, it makes me incredibly sad that the state is going to move forward with this um, when I think they know it's wrong. Yeah. Um, Attorney Weiss, on the other hand, you have um, some people who are against him receiving clemency, uh, including the governor, um, and they feel that mm -hmm. he committed a crime and he should pay for that crime, um, unfortunately, with his life. What do you say to those people? Well, there's no question. Um, that Mr. Johnson did commit the crime. He's never denied that through his lawyers at, tr at the trials. He has acknowledged his um, involvement in the murders, and they're terrible. The, um, he is incredibly remorseful for his actions. But the United States Supreme Court has said that, you know, while they support, you know, certain justices support and believe that the death penalty is an appropriate punishment. They have said unequivocally that executing the intellectually disabled is both morally and legally wrong. 
And in this case, um, you know, I think we can see that, that putting to death somebody who is not as morally culpable as those who have even average intelligence, that that's wrong. So, Attorney Weiss, to piggyback off of what you just said, yes, the Supreme Court did make that ruling in 2002, but it also left that threshold uh, for disability to be determined by the state. Considering what we're seeing in your client's case, how do we prevent this from happening? I mean, this miscarriage of justice from happening again with anyone else, regardless of their color or crime? Well, that's a real challenge. Um, the way our system works, at least in Missouri, is for uh, the jury to make that determination. And what the Supreme Court has said since 2002 is that uh, courts and uh, the judiciary should be governed by or guided by uh, clinical standards. And I think it's a real challenge for any jury to consider the facts of a, of a, a murder, um, along with trying to make a clinical decision about an individual's intellectual disability when, you know, for instance, Mr. Johnson doesn't look any different. So, you know, there's nothing, and if you don't hear from him, um, you wouldn't know that he's slow in processing, that he doesn't understand everything. And it's hard for a jury to square that. I think there has to be something that's taken out of the jury process where it's, in, it's incredibly challenging for any juror, any human, to, to take a look at murder photos, to see the families that are grieving, and make a dispassionate decision about an individual's intellectual functioning. So I think it has to be taken as something that is determined pre-trial. Attorney Weiss, thank you so much, um, sir. We wish you the best of luck, and we look forward to uh, talking with you again in the future to see how this all plays out.